Oh, yes, I'm Zanzi. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Health Tuesday, but we're taking a spin on this conversation and bringing the importance of menstruation to the front line right now. Now, up next, we got in chat to Filani Zama, the founding executive director of O Graceland, as well as Marius Passon, the co-founder and director of Menstruation Foundation. Now, these two men are fighting period poverty with their sanitary pad vending machine project, which was initially launched in 2021, and it has expanded its reach internationally. So we're celebrating that. This is an absolutely incredible landmark project like no other. And it started right here on the African continent. So I think with that, let's say good morning, gentlemen. Let's celebrate that first. Uh, yes, please. <laughs> I know. It, it, it is a little absurd that we're applauding you for doing this. Um, mm, the yeah. fact that we need to, to be applauding anyone for doing this is just I insane to me. Um, Pilani, maybe I can, I can start with you. Uh, I'm sure you shake your head a lot. Uh, I'm sure you roll your eyes a lot. I'm sure you're like, what is going on? Almost every step you take, but you've got traction. You're yeah. getting there, you're doing it. 2021, we saw the first, first vending machine get out there. What's the response been like? Because you need this to land well and be successful so that we can kind of somehow shake this country into action. How's it going? Um, I think it's, it's going pretty well. Actually, we've grown quite a bit, um, you know, when I say a bit, like quite a lot in a very short space of time. Um, I don't think Morris and I anticipated when, when we got together as both organizations, Old Grace and Menstruation Foundation, that we'd have this much traction in a very short space of time. Um, and, and I think we, we now national, internationally, um, yeah. throughout the, 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 the country and, and in Lesotho. So, I mean, it, it's just been a, a big wow moment um, in, in terms of our track um, throughout the, the past two, two, three years. All right, so for those that have no idea actually what's going on right now, let's just, just take a step back, right? Maurice, maybe you can explain to me these vending machines. What exactly are they doing? Where are they placed? And how can, let's say, women and girls in need actually access this? How, how does it all work? So when we started, you know, we, we did the typical bad drives that a lot of people do in South Africa, but then realized quickly that, look, it's the, it's the worst thing to do. Mm. It's undignified, it's not sustainable. So we had to create a system that's dignified and sustainable mm. and impact all the time. Women's period is a monthly occurrence, you know, yeah. so it's, it doesn't start once off. So we created the Sandy Pad Dispensing Machine project over a nine-month period. It had to be non-electrical. Obviously, a lot of um, bathrooms don't have access. The last thing you want is that a lady's on a period and um, there's load shedding. Yeah. Yeah. So we had to create that. Um, obviously robust and all of that, token driven. And uh, it's the first of its kind in the world. Launched two years ago. Um, system works as follows. We get sponsors and donors to, um, to, to, to pay for these machines. We do not put it up if it doesn't come with at least 12 months of stock. Okay. So it's a sustainable, oh, sustainable wow, impact. Sure. And then we, yeah, we put it up in mostly in schools, but also universities, um, clinics, police stations, wherever it is. I mean, there's a need everywhere. Yeah. Um, system works as follows, is that the lady signs out a token. Whenever she, her period starts, she nobody even have to know it. She takes a token, she goes to the machine, which is usually in a woman's bathroom or in a, in a, in a private space. A safe place, yeah. Puts in a token and gets a free pack of pads for that month. Oh, um, absolutely wow. brilliant, absolutely amazing. And, and again, it, it's absurd to me that we, we have to kind of lord yeah. praise for getting this right. Yeah. Um, and I suppose for me, it fits into the pit latrine conversation. It's like baseline human experience that is yeah. just for some reason, we haven't been able to cross that. Maybe an individual story is what's gonna bring about change. Maybe that one person who's been helped can tell this story. What kind of impact has this made? I know we're looking bigger picture, but on yeah. the individuals who get to change their life because now they're being treated differently, what impact does this have, do you think, on the girls now who have access? So, so I think um, we, we, that is such a broad um, outline in, in terms of the impact. Um, and I think for, for me, it's purely based on the fact that school days. Yeah. You know, if I had to lose um, the amount of school days that a... An entire a, a, year in you know, school a, a, career, yeah? a, a young girl or a, a young woman has to lose, I'd probably be dismal. I'd, I'd fail. But here we are expecting young women to actually exceed and, and, and make it after losing each and every month about four to five, um, you know, school days, you know, in, in that sense. So the impact that we've seen, our stats and, uh, you know, the response that we've, we've received, 
achieved is basically, you know, um, the girl child not missing school. Yeah. It, that, that's that is, as, as real as it is, is that no girl that has got onto our program has lost a day in school. terms of that's enough. Terms of school. That's yeah. enough. Yeah. Enough to be celebrated, but this is enough to, I think, get more of this going, get more of this conversation going, get more of this product into certain places. How do we make that happen? How do we get, let's say, corporates involved? How would you get more of these machines across the country to make this a norm, a standard, no matter where you go? How do we get, in, how do we get behind this? Well, free free shows like a spread. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, we do a lot of these drives. We're very fortunate. Um, even last week, we had St. Cyprian and Bishop School that did an event for us, a boys' school. That's yeah. obviously why we started Menstruation nice. Foundation. Yeah, yeah. Did a mixed event and raised over 100,000 rands, which will put almost three of these machines up in schools over a 12-month period. So just get everybody involved, you know, get the word out there and, and, and break, make it happen. Break it down for us. How much do they cost? What's the time frame? Who do they speak to? Do that, because we've got... So the machine started, it ranged from 30 to 80,000 rand um, the first year. It all depends on how much stock it dispenses. You know, a machine okay. of 80,000 rand dispenses 600 packs of pads per month wow. um, right. uh, over a 12 month period. Like we said again, we don't put up a machine for a once off. Yeah, it yeah. needs to come with at least 12 months. Yeah. Everybody had signed up with the program, it's extended year two into year three now. So it's just been phenomenal. You contact us on menstruation.foundation or, or, or every, all the details is there and we make it the magic happen. Can people brand? Yes, of course, yes. So the whole system works where you can co-brand it. You obviously get your, um, your benefits of like your Section 18A certificates for yes. tax purposes, your CSI points, your BE, all of that stuff is part of the foundation. So they get the benefit, they write it all off. At the end of the day, they make massive impact every month. Yeah, on, the, on a baseline, on the baseline human experience. Uh, gentlemen, please don't move a muscle, don't go <laughs> anywhere, we're going to continue this chat. We are talking about menstruation today and it's time for the gents to have this man explained to us. Mm -hmm. So we get it, finally. <laughs> it's my feel good breakfast show. Yes, Mzanzi, welcome back. It's your Feel Good Breakfast Show, and it is feeling so good because of this conversation that we're having, all about menstruation. And have you noticed, gents are having the convo. Yes, <laughs> please. Now, it's shocking to believe that when it comes to menstruation, which is a natural and important process in a woman's life, it has long been shrouded in stigma, misunderstanding, and misinformation, just to say the least. Now, on top of this, while women continue to openly discuss and advocate for menstrual health, it's obvious that men still need educating right now. That's exactly what's going down. We've got Pilani Zama and Marius Besson, two men leading two different organizations for women that they're back to share their perspectives on this topic and also talk about this incredible product that's been designed to serve our woman. Yes, please. Um, uh, gents, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, yeah. thank you, thank you. A million times over because you are clearly driven by a purpose here yeah, and other people are, are leaning on that and that's great. So if you've got tons of money out there and needing a purpose in your organisation, boom, there we go. Um, and it's cheap. The machine is amazing. It's a modern marvel for me because it doesn't involve any modern technology, yeah. <laughs> which is great. So just walk us through very quickly, explain the machine. Lucia's there, he's going to open it up for us so we can have a look at the relatively simple but genius inner workings. How does it all come together? Yeah, so it's like a barrel system. So when the token gets inserted and the slot gets turned, the whole mechanism turn one slot sideways and click, it dispenses the pad oh, at the bottom. Oh, nice. Yeah. Pack of, a pack of pads for the lady for the month. There it's we like go. the revolver of a gun, <laughs> essentially, but this 100%. Time, we're shooting down <laughs> stigma, we're shooting down misunderstanding. I love Such this. a boy. <laughs> like that. Like the most <laughs> but child -like also, I mean, remember, we, uh, you know, a pad is a product. It can yeah. be sold. So yeah, we just sure. want to make sure that we, we cut out all the, the nonsense and the corruption around, you know, pads being free but never getting to the user end. Yeah. 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 Let's talk about challenges okay because i know you've faced many and i think maybe some might surprise people because we are quite comfortably having this conversation because we started this a couple yep. of years ago yep. so we're comfortable finally talking about these things what have been the biggest challenges here is it the norm is it trying to break down we use the word stigma all the time i think too much is there a socio-economic element at play here is it an educational element here are you fighting the system are you fighting patriarchy what what are we fighting here what is the crux, and I know I'm putting a lot on both of your <laughs> shoulders right now to solve the, the problems of the world, but if you guys can't see this, then who can? Because you're in it. What has been your biggest challenge? I think, I mean, Morris might elaborate, but I think f from my side, uh, there's two elements. The first one is education. Yeah. You know, uh, men, you know, tend to not know. know. 
just don't know. You know, yeah. uh, I mean, Marius got into the space because he has a daughter. Yeah. You know, in that in that sense. But beyond all of that, it's just just lack of education. But um, and then the second thing is 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 literally exactly that stigma. You know, so we 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 work a lot in townships, uh, quite a lot. And uh, first of all, Zulu man. <laughs> Afrikaans <laughs> men, um, you know, going into townships, both of us fighting period poverty, and you find that um, most men t just cringe. Yeah. Like, we, we say it for what it is. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I mean, I won't say it on live TV what we normally say, that is our motto um, at, at the Menstruation Foundation, but it, it is, like, we wouldn't exist without a period. Yeah. And so that is foreign to, to the man. That we don't exist, but from for, yeah, from my side, I think that that's the biggest thing: education and the whole stigma around periods. But also just realizing that um, we are the problem, as in we need to change us, not save women. Yeah. Once we change, then women have a platform to thrive. Yeah, everything you know? else yeah. will fall into place. Yeah, it's not that yeah. something needs to be given. No, we no. just need to adjust. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And, and and I like that sentiment because like women. They can save themselves, right? They're powerful yep. enough to do so. Definitely. How can we assist this, though? How should we be facilitating this conversation right now? I mean, one thing for me is obviously the empathy. And I think that's yep. something that gets created through understanding the process, understand what women go through. But beyond that, how can we get more involved? How can we be more supportive and make this just the norm? Because yeah. that's surely what it needs to be by now. It's simple for us, you know, there's a reason there's men in menstruation and man in humanity, you know, that's where we all come from. Yeah. Our slogan is if men bled once a month, sanitary products would be free, and that needs to be realized by all, you know. Women need to talk to us about it as well. Yeah. What do they experience? And yeah. we need to be open about it. Yeah. And then it's all about the facts, you know. Out of the 22 million females that bleed in this, month, uh, in this country, every month, you know. Seven to eight million can't afford it, four of them in the school sector. So we dispense over 50,000 of these pads um, per month. People go, oh, it's phenomenal. It's 1.5% of the, ocean, yeah. of yeah, the poverty yeah. rate. So that is the reality, and that's where people need to get on board with. And I think this has become a beautiful indicator of where that socio-economic conversation is. You know, it's just like our wildlife. All these things speak to a healthy community. And yeah. if we're not getting this right, we're not going to get anything else right. Yeah. Yeah. I can promise you, because this is at the base of life. This is it. This is where life begins. Your life began through this process. You've got to take it on board. If you're a dad to a girl child, start that conversation, ask the questions, let them help guide you through this process. It is a conversation where nothing needs to be embarrassing, nothing needs to be that stigma anymore. If four gents as diverse as this can sit and have a comfortable chat about this, you can too. Start with that. Just to ask your partner what her experience through this process is like and just start with that. Guys, we love you, man. Thank yeah. you so much. Oh, thank you Thanks so much. Thanks a lot, gents. And the machines are cheap, eh? Pump them out. Go.